Welcome to Wadsworth History on Film, a program presented by the Wadsworth Area Historical Society and designed to record the oral history of Wadsworth for posterity. I'm Cesar Carino, your host, and our guest today is Joanne Han Chobin. Joanne, we're going to be talking about your background as one of the remaining German families, I mean, actually from Germany. But before we do that, you weren't always as old as you are right now. You were born at one time, were you not? Sure. Are you sensitive about your age? No. Tell us no. when you were born. November 12, 1930. November 12, 1930, mm -hmm. so you're 68 years old, no, or will be 68 will years be. old pretty soon. Mm -hmm. And tell us a little bit about that um, special event that um, uh, bore also another sibling mm -hmm. at the same time, the same day. I have a twin brother, mm -hmm. John. 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 Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, yes. he's gone now. But, yes. And we'll uh, be talking about that a little bit later on, how he how he uh, died and so forth. Um, born where? Uh, we were born in Kenmore. In Kenmore. Uh huh. And then moved out on Rymer Road in the Norton area and lived with my grandparents until I was five. And who were your grandparents? Uh, Adam and Suzanne Hahn. Hahn. Mm -hmm. And they were right from Germany. Yes. And your mother and father were right from Germany, were mm -hmm. they not? They're, they're they born came in Germany. When they were five years old. Five years them. old. Mm -hmm. They came from here from Germany. Mm -hmm. And we'll be talking about that too because that's so important. There's there is a clan of, of German people. We've been trying to get all of the nationality people, the Hungarians, Italians, and Poles, whatever we happen to have, Slovenians, whatever. And there are very few who actually came from Germany. And you are probably one of the remaining group of those people, and there are a couple more, and we'll be talking about who they might be as well. Uh, tell us a little bit about um, when you came from Youngstown to Rymer Road. No, from Kenmore. I'm from, I'm sorry, from um, Kenmore to Rymer Road. <clears throat> when you say in the Norton area, actually it was all at your grandfather's at the Norton area, but then mm -hmm. you moved to Rymer Road. About a mile from there on Medina County Line when I was five. My parents bought their farm then. Mm -hmm. and, and tell us where that is geographically, because now there are houses which are going to be on that. Uh, it is made about half mile north of Rymer Road. Half mile north of Rymer Road on the west side of the road. West side, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And it still is a farm as of, as we speak today. Well, there were 64 acres, but we have sold off. There is a development there now. The roads are in, and they are ready to sell lots. So that's gone. That's gone. That's mm -hmm. gone. We, okay. We sold the farm, house, and barn two years ago to Bill and Carol Heck. They are both teachers, lovely people. And we still have three and a half acres and two buildings. So we still have a part of the farm in the family. And you're going to stay keep it that way? Yes. You're yes. going to keep that. Does anyone yes. live there? Uh, no, there's just two buildings. On the three and a half acres? Yes. No, there's just two buildings there. The uh, house is no longer there? No. Well, the house is there. The teachers bought the house. Oh, the teachers bought yeah, the house. Yeah, they bought three and a half acres, I the see. barn, the house, and yes. Tell us a little bit about your girlhood days, learning to speak English and things of that nature. Well, I can always speak English. Um, I knew German very fluently up until about age six because living next door to Grandma. Uh, Grandma took a trip back to Europe. When I was six years old, she was gone six months, and I kind of forgot my German because my parents didn't speak German that much at home. Grandma always did, mm -hmm. and we answered in English. So I can still understand it, but not speak it too well. You can't speak it too well, but <laughs> no. you could speak it if you had to, yeah. and it wouldn't take I, much time. I could spit enough words out, yes. <laughs> you could spit enough words out. Tell us a little bit about your early days with your twin brother, John. Um, Growing up on the farm, we were very close in school. We were always in the same class, so there was a real bonding with twins there. And worked hard on the farm. My parents were truck farmers and dairy farmers. And there was a bonding there with family, which was great. Uh, you're out in the field working with your parents, 24 hours a day, you're with and your you parents. And you worked hard, too. Yes, you yes. very hard. We had a large truck farm, one of the largest ones around. Yes. Uh, after I was married, we had 22 acres of cabbage one year and 25 acres another year. So 25 acres of cabbage. Yes. And, and they're so big, tall. beautiful cabbage. Yes, from, yes. Tell us, um, going back now to your own parents and your grandparents, Adam Hahn came from Germany. Where in Germany did he, was he born? Uh, I believe Yaking. There were a whole bunch of little towns. I'm not real sure, but he was from Germany, yes. And where were your parents born? In Austria-Hungary. 
And what was the name of that town? Do you remember? No, I don't. No, no I don't. Now, your mother was not a Han when she was married, right? No, she well, was a Kohler. Kohler. K O L E R. K O H L E R. Right, mm -hmm. Kohler. Mm -hmm. And are her relatives living around here at all? Uh, no, they are all gone. They're all gone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And are the Hans still living around here? Uh, I have an aunt, Elizabeth, who lives on Rymer Road yet. Uh, and my Uncle Phil, who lived in Grandma's farmhouse, has passed away. And an Uncle Adam, who lived on the other side of the farmhouse, has passed away. And, and they are all uncles. And mm -hmm. so, uh, the rest of them are all gone. Mm -hmm. They're all gone. So you are the, remain the oldest remaining Han, is that correct? Uh, Yes, I was the oldest grandchild in the Han family. Mm -hmm. yes. So you're the oldest John one. You're mm -hmm. the only one left. And mm -hmm. John, where are you living? Tell yeah. us a little bit about John's unfortunate death in 1981. Uh, it was an on-the-job accident. He was killed instantly in, in Florida. Florida. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I remember that. Curse. On our 51st birthday. On the 51st birthday, yes. on November 12th, 1981. Yes. I remember that if it were yesterday, of course, I have known you 60 years at least, or yeah. more than that, probably. Oh, oh yes, great school. <laughs> yeah, 63, 64 years because we were we started school together. Mm -hmm. Done at Centralized. We graduated together, and um, we never, never once uh, devoted ourselves of that friendship, which no, we no. cherish. And I'm so glad to hear you talk about the fact that uh, your farm life brought you so close together. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, the people who went to Centralized School, as we did, uh, all had that kind of orientation because uh, that still means a great deal to us today. Those people with whom we went, we spent those first free, a few years are still very close. Oh, yeah. And uh, I believe that it comes from the fact that the farm people lived closely together. They worked closely together, mm -hmm. and that happened there. Well, Dad worked in the rubber shop for 16 years, and we had a hired man. And other than that, he was on the farm. He was on the farm we all the time. We had breakfast together, lunch together, dinner together. Everything together, everything, yes. every single solitary um, day. At our class reunion dinner, we were sitting around the table talking about milking cows before we went to school because we all lived on farms. We were the farm kids at Centralized. That's right. And all it's the chores we had to do. Union. Yeah, our 50th, yeah. And Leonard Hurst was at our table and he said, No wonder I fell asleep in history class because I had to get up at 4 30. That's right. You know, so we yeah. all did. We, that's mm -hmm. right. We had My father, Rusty Soul, would, uh, would be walking around the house at 6 o'clock in the morning saying, uh, six o'clock already. You're still sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> Rise and shine. <laughs> that was uh, that was a late date. Six o'clock yeah. in the morning. I mean, mm -hmm. you had to get up so that you had an op had a head start on the day. And got on the Tell us, on um, there are more Han children too, aren't there? Not. Yes. Tell us who they are. Uh, you mean my family? Yes, or your, yes, your my family. Children? Yes, your, no, no, no. Your your brothers. Oh, my brothers. We'll oh, yes. your, we're going to get to your children in a few uh, minutes. There's. Um, there was John and I, and then there was Ron. Ronnie was the only single one. He's the only single twin, right. he said. <laughs> um, he lives on Trees Road and retired from Wadsworth Post Office, 33 years service. And we're going to talk about him a little bit and what he does because um, uh, he's quite notable with his um, Uncle Sam Uncle uniform Sam. and uh, his mm -hmm. personality. Great yeah. guy, great guy. Yes. And then you have another set of twins. Yes, Gary and Larry were another set of twins. Gary and Larry. Mm -hmm. and Gary lives on Medina Line Road. He's truck farming. He's retired from UPS. And Larry is out by Sky Park on Greenwich Road. And he still works at General Motors in Parma. Mm -hmm. Now, where is the truck farm that uh, Larry Gary. Gary uh, 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 operates. On the Dine Line Row between uh, 261 and Western Star. He has a little stand out in front and sells produce. And that, uh, just a few, uh, so we get geographically where it is, it's um, uh, about uh, 1,000 feet north of um, Greenwich Road, right? Uh, or Broad Street. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. On the west side of the road. On the west side of the road. Mm -hmm. West side of the road. He just built that house not too tired long. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Probably 19. About eight years ago or so. 1985 or somewhere in that area. Yeah. The um, the the uh, the tw the single one. Um, how do you think that he felt between the two sets of twins? Well, I kept telling him he was so ornery. We we're just lucky we only got one of him. <laughs> <laughs> well, no. the uh, well, he's a he's a great person as we said before. Um, um, full of life. Yes, yeah. yes. Now, sisters yes. are allowed to say ornery, but the rest of us have yes. to say full of life. Yes. <clears throat> did uh, did the bo younger boys have to work on the farm, too? Uh, yes, but not as hard as I did, because by the time they came along, we had milk machines and balers and combines and, and corn-picking machines. 
When I grew up, we didn't have that. You still remember milking cows? Yes, pitching and hay, pitching shocking hay, wheat. Shocking wheat. Yes. You still can do that, I'll bet. Uh, yeah, probably could. Now, um, they, use, they usually say that women's work is in the house. In the Hahn family, it was in the house and in the field, as I remember. Right, right. Uh, your mother, Julia, uh, beautiful woman, died when, two or three years ago? No, just last October. Oh, last October. 97. Okay. 97. Mm -hmm. At what age? 89. 89. Uh, she was in a nursing home five and a half years. She had Alzheimer's. She was born 1908 then? Yes. 19. She had been through a lot of surgeries and, mm -hmm. yes. And uh, she was a hard worker too. Absolutely, she loved the outdoors. Yes, and she was a, just yes. a, a pillar of. Well, she was a good cook, but uh, well, for five children, sure, she had to do a lot of cooking, mm -hmm. canning, but she loved the outdoors. And she was good at Never it. Never got tired. No. Never said she no, was she's tired. She's a powerful woman. And what about your father? When was he born? 1909. 1909. Mm -hmm. He's a little younger than your mother. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a, year and a somewhat half. unusual, but yes, um, year and a half. And your father died several years ago, though. Uh, 1988. 1988. At 79. Mm -hmm. Had a heart attack. He died seven years after Johnny mm -hmm. was, was, uh, was killed. Yes. Yes. Now um, we have um, no other sisters. You're the only one. Only one. The only one. Big sister. And um, <laughs> does that mean that you were the boss, or with three brothers, you you were not the boss? I think they kind of looked up to me as big sister. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. knowing your brothers. <laughs> well, we all spoke our piece, I guess. <laughs> I guess so. I guess so. Tell us a little bit about the family, or the relationships among the German families uh, as you were growing up, and name some of those German families that we um, uh, so um, rightfully respect to this day. Well, there was the Herman Just family. The they Herman Just family. Tell us a little bit about Herman Just, where he lived and who his family was. Uh, he lived on Treese Road. Treese Road. Yes, and Herman and Susie were my godparents. And uh, they were also truck farmers and very close friends. My father met Herman before they were married. And uh, very good friends all these years. They're mm -hmm. All gone now. Oh, they're so. all gone. Yeah, they're and they used to go dancing to the German American Club on Saturday night. That was their entertainment. My mother loved to dance. And uh, that was their getaway with other couples there and went to the German American Club. Now, the, the Herman Just family has some children, one or two in Wadsworth yet? Uh, yes, Ronnie and Edward are in Wadsworth. Mm -hmm. Ron Just and Edward Just are mm -hmm. in Wadsworth. And Herman is in Norton and Eileen is in Akron. And they're, they're all still living? Yes, right. yes. Mm -hmm. Do you remember any of the other German families in Wadsworth? Um, the ones who came from Germany. We have tons of Pennsylvania Dutch yeah. who are Germanic. Well, all my aunts and uncles were in this area. We all lived in this area. And who were they so that we know who those are? On my mother's side, there was um, Matt and Jack Kohler. Now, they, they lived, lived here in, in town. They lived in Copley. Copley, mm -hmm. okay. And then Eva Kramer, who had Kramer's Greenhouse, right. now, was my aunt. Some, uh, aunt uh, she was a she was a Kohler. Yes, mm -hmm. no? she was so a Kohler. So Eva Kramer. Tell us about the Kramer family. That's a big German family also. Um, they had the big greenhouse on 94. Not north of Clark's Corners, yes. on the west side of the road. We have to we have to identify yes, these now. Yes, almost to the Wadsworth Township line. Right. We have to identify these because it's so easy for that to be gobbled up by a housing yeah. allotment. It was just uh, Bob's nursery. Bob's nursery now. Yes. Bob bought it from my aunt. Mm -hmm. And there were, five, what, six Kramer children and one girl. One of, the, one of them was a girl, right? Yes. And Norma. No, no, Nancy. Norma, um, a Nancy. Nancy yes. Kramer. Mm -hmm. There was Elmer. Um, tell Art. us who the Kramers were. There was Elmer, Art, Clay, Ray, and Nancy. Right. And then my mother grew up just beyond there, about two farm, maybe the first farm, in to Sharon Township, which is now the Berry Farm. The that's Berry where, Farm. That's where my mother lived and she got married. Like, and uh, my mother keeps saying that she helped her father build that barn. My mother was 21 when she got married. So that barn on the Berry Farm, my grandfather built. And I was only two when that grandfather passed away. So your mother helped build the barn, which is yep. the, uh, let's get the location of that. That would be about a mile north of uh, Clark's Corners mm -hmm. on the east side of the... Um, 
west, west side, side of the road, road. West side of the road yes. on the berry farm. Berry farm. Mm -hmm. And the berry farm will probably be a housing a lot, but when we write this history. I, I suppose. Yeah. But right now we, we want to know where that is. Mm -hmm. Tell us about the Kramers and how they got involved with the greenhouses and what your relationship was and how you uh, went back and forth and so forth uh, in, in friendship. Uh, well, they, they were, were first cousins of yours. <clears throat> yes, yes. Um, well, they were truck farmers there also. Mm -hmm. Went to Summit Growers Market in Akron like my father did. Um, you picked on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. You went to market on Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday and took all your vegetables. Um, on Saturdays, the grocery store men would come at 4 o'clock in the morning and get their produce for the store that day. There was no big wholesale house where you got it. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had a lot of glads. We had, well, we started out with strawberries, raspberries. Uh, we had tomatoes, peppers, lima beans. You name it, sweet corn. Cabbage. Cabbage, lots of glads, <laughs> yes. So the Kramers were also truck farmers and went to the market like my father did. Well, do you remember the first truck that your father had in going to the market? Uh, yes, it was a red and silver truck. Red and silver truck. <laughs> and we went to church in the truck because that was all we had was That's, a pickup truck. And do you remember what, it, what kind it was? A Chevy. A Chevy. My father was a Chevy person. Right, a red and silver, silver truck. Mm -hmm. We remember that very, yes. very well. Yes. And all four of you sat in the front seat because there was only one. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. When mm -hmm. the two boys came, the, when the, uh, the, uh, your brother came along and then the other two, then you had cars, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. But you always yeah. had a pickup truck. Yes, I remember always that had a truck. Very distinctly. <laughs> <clears throat> yes. When you were growing up. Your mother drove too. That's so an unusual uh, thing for a person her age, but no, she, she drove. she drove too. And she was a good driver. As a matter of fact, she could... She drove that, up till the end. Yep, to the very, very end. The Kramers um, are first cousins of yours because your mother and Mrs. Kramer, who was Aunt... Eva. Eva. Mm -hmm. Eva Kramer, uh, were sisters. Yes. Now... Did your mother have any other sisters in this area, or uh, brothers? Yes, she had, well, the two brothers in Copley. Okay, in Copley. And then she had Catherine. Catherine. She was the youngest. She had the Red Pepper Steakhouse on Barber Road. And Catherine was married to? Uh, Catherine was married to Louis Uhas. Uhas. Mm -hmm. J-U-H-A-S. Z. A Z A J U H S Z. Uh huh. Spell that again, please. J U H A S Z. And, and his first name was Louis. Louis Uhouse. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Red Pepper Steakhouse. Where yes. did she live? Where did? <clears throat> uh, not too far from there. Uh, well, you could almost see the house from the restaurant. All right. On Fraser Drive. On North. Fraser Drive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But she did, did not live in Wadsworth here. No, no. But she was born there in Sharon Center, or was she born uh, in Germany I, also? No, no. She was born, I believe, in Sharon Center. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, your parents had um, had to learn to speak German, to speak English, is that correct? Uh, well, coming over at age five, yeah, probably. They had to learn how to speak English. Mm -hmm. Many of us had to do that as a result of um, mm -hmm. our parentage. Uh, um, whether you're German, Italian, Greek, or whatever, you had to learn to speak English. Right. And we all picked it up pretty well, I yes. think. Now, uh, as we look back during those, those days, uh, the first, well, shall we say, the, the, the first efforts at truck farming. Um, meant tremendous sacrifices for immigrants. What kinds of sacrifices do you remember your parents having had to make to get that truck farm going? They were not always a prosperous That's farm right. family. That's right. Um, Dad had bought the farm in 1935 and during the Depression. That's right. So it was hard getting started. Um, I can remember the first tractor was an old metal one with lug wheels, you know. Fordson. Uh, for, yeah. Fordson, Ferguson. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then he had a Ford Ferguson, right. and then I guess it was just Ford. And mm -hmm. I can remember my father took very good care of his tools. Uh, his tractors were waxed. Mm -hmm. And uh, we would come in from the field with the plant setter, and it was washed, even though it was going to be used for the next two weeks. It was all washed up. The fertilizer washed out, the mud off of the wheels, and he took very good care of his tools, and they lasted. All of the, all of the foreign element did. They took. They had to because they had nothing else. That's right. They had I mean, to last. They had to last, and they lasted forever. And they did good jobs with them. When um, when he started out, however, he had horses, right? Yes. Yes. And do you remember those horses? And do you remember the names of those horses? Uh, I don't know the name of it, but I know he had a horse that was blind. But it was such a good worker because it walked right beside the other one. Mm -hmm. And I can still see the hired man out there cultivating with a one. One, one. For a plow and mm -hmm. and the horse and going down and turning around, coming back and mm -hmm. took a whole day to do a field. 
Oh, he's easy, easy yeah. surely. Mm -hmm. And it was the most boring thing in the world. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. And walking behind that cultivator, behind that plow was yes. very, very difficult. Yes. Dusty, dirty, Spring hot. Springtooth and whatever you know, was all pulled by horses. All pulled by horses. Mm -hmm. When do you remember your first tractor? Uh, probably about 1945, maybe when I was a teenager, Daddy bought a new tractor. A new tractor. Mm -hmm. new not tractor. the. You're not talking My about. My father the was a new, a new person. A new Everything person. Everything was yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, they, they. Um, some people say we can't afford not to buy new because it costs so much to, to rejuvenate. Yeah. I was talking to a person the other day who bought a house for very, very little, but it cost him twice as much to rejuvenate oh, as, if were, <laughs> if, as if he were to um, uh, tear it down and start over again. Right. Going back to um, the uh, the days when you were in school, you went to which school? Centralized. Centralized. And you remember mm -hmm. some of your teachers? Oh, yes. Who were they? I had Mrs. Gates, was my first grade teacher. First grade teacher. teacher. Uh, Miss Viney, second grade. Second grade. Miss Coleman, third. Miss Coleman, who turned out to be Mrs. White. Yes. Cecilia Coleman White. Yes. Mm -hmm. And Miss Cooter, fourth. Uh, Zelda Cooter. Zelda, was that her? Zelda. Mm -hmm. And um, Irene Burt. Grindle. Uh, who just died. Yes. In 1998. She, they were very good friends. She and her husband and my parents. All and tell us years. why they were uh, they were good parents. Or why they were good friends. Well, um, Irene Grindle's husband was a dairy farmer up on Fixer Road. And being a farmer, of course, they went back and forth. And they would go out to eat together. And they would come home and play cards at someone's house. And yes, they were lovely people. They were, indeed, yes. and we remember them. And yes. grade six was Miss? Miss Huff. Miss Huff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, how about in the, at Centralized, we went until the ninth grade. Yes. Who, who, what teachers do you remember from the seventh, eighth, and ninth grades down there? Uh, I had Mr. Emmerich. Mr. Emmerich, Ms. math. Miss Steiner. Miss Steiner, English. Um, hmm. Elvira Steiner and Lionel Emmerich. Yes. L-I-O-N-E-L-L-N-E-L-V-I-R-A. -L -L -E um, oh, there was an English teacher. I I was going to say Sebring. Seb Sebling. 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 Okay. And Miss Foote. Mrs. Foote. Mrs. Foote. Yes. Eugenia Foote. Yes. Had her. Um, Mrs. Mulholland. Yes. Yes. M e h o l l i n v e r a v e r a Mulholland. Yes. And of course, Mr. Ashen, my principal. Principal, Mr. Ashen, Vernon V. Ashen, V. E. R. N. O. N. V. Ashen. He lived over on Rhymer Road. On Rhymer mm -hmm. Road. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right next to you. Uh, no, we. No, he was south going of, down a little bit. South was, of you. Uh, uh, no, east, east of us, on Rhymer Road. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, yeah. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Or from sorry, the farm, yes. but yeah, okay, he was, yeah. yeah. He was east down on Rhymer Road, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, which other ones do you remember? Um, I think that's all down there. Oh, of course, the cook, uh, Miss... Liza, Liza Brooks. Liza Brooks, mm -hmm. yes. She was a sweetheart. Yes, she was. Put out good dinners. <laughs> Pardon me? Put out good lunches. She did, she mm -hmm. was. And she did it with almost nothing. Mm -hmm. People, farmers would bring in potatoes and she would cook them. <laughs> and, um, oh, uh, Miss, Mrs. Rada. Mrs. Rada? Uh, Rada. Rada? Rada. She was a cooking I, teacher, I think. No, she was uh, high school. High school? Yes. Mm -hmm. Francis okay. Rada, high school. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who was your bus driver? Harvey Rogers. Harvey Rogers. Yes. We had Harvey Rogers, uh, we had um, uh, Thelma Rogers on. I saw that yes. film. Mm -hmm. And Thelma is related to Harvey Rogers, I think daughter-in-law, daughter is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. And um, then Clyde Rogers also drove bus. Do you remember your bus number? Two. Two, mm -hmm. and ours was nine. Was it? Chuck Long drove our I bus. I think maybe I had Clyde my last one or two years after Harv had passed away. He passed away. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. Now, you were the first people on the bus, is that correct? Yes. And the last people off? Yes. What time did you have to get on the bus to get to school? Like 7.20. 7.20 in the morning. Now yeah. they do that regularly, but at that time, school didn't start until 8.30. 8 8 mm, I don't remember when we started. Yeah, yeah 7.20. 8.30. Mm -hmm. And what time would you get home? Oh, like 3.30. Did that cause a problem? Well, we stopped school at 3.30, so it'd have to be after. Oh, yeah. oh, well, then probably at least 4 o'clock. About yeah. 4 o'clock then. Did that cause any problems with um, John Hahn Sr., that you weren't home on time to help? No, nope. you just went in and got a snack and got in your work clothes. <laughs> and you went right out there. Right out in the field. And then you came in for supper. Mm -hmm. Tell us what your activities were after supper on the farm, um, in a German farm at that. Well, there was no TV then when no we were teenagers. TV, right. So um, all of the neighbor kids went down to, it was the farm north of us on the right-hand side, Schulenberger was the Schulenberger. name. Schulenberger. Yes. And, uh, let's make and that about a mile, two miles north of um, 
of Reimer Ro Road on the east side right. of the road. Right, mm -hmm. and all the neighbor kids would gather there and play baseball at night. Uh, Mr. Schulenberger was the pitcher. He was probably in his 60s. He had three children that played, and uh, we just had a ball. Uh, he was the ump. I mean, strikes, outs, nobody argued, nobody bickered, and we just had a lot of fun. That was like Schillenberger, he probably was also German, is that correct? Uh, probably. Did, mm -hmm. You had learned a long time ago not to argue with German adults, <laughs> right? right? <laughs> you don't argue with them. They nope. tell you what to do, and that's all there is yes. to it. Cooks. We are telling you about your mother's cooking. Uh, it was um, well known that she was an outstanding cook Good and baker. cooked uh, tremendous baked goods and sausage. Yes. Tell us about this special sausage recipe that your mother had. Uh, well, it was the hot German garlic flavored sausage when we butchered, made our own sausage. And up until my father got ill, he made sausage at the German American Club for okay. banquets, weddings, and they even sold sausage. They sold sausage. Yes. And tell yes. us how the sausage was made, or is that, a, is that one of the Han secrets? Well, no, it's not a secret. It, you, uh, it was made from the shoulders of the pig and ground the meat, and then you added your salt, black pepper, hot pepper, hot red pepper and garlic water, not the garlic cloves. Okay. You put, you cut the garlic up and put it in a quart jar and put hot water on it and then that water you poured into your garlic. And then you mixed it in a big wooden tub and then you would take a little patty and fry it and taste it and see if it needed more salt, more pepper, whatever it needed. So everybody helping make the sausage got to say what it needed. So. Tell us what a sausage press looks like, I and mean, I'm sure that there are people who have never seen a sausage press. Well, they still have them, though. They have uh, them, yes. Yeah, you put the meat in it and crank the How handle. How big is it? Show us the. Oh, it's about this tall, that and that round. this big around. You usually and made it a cast iron. It had a plate that came down, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, had a handle, and then it had the two. You would put the casing on the two. Now, tell us what the casing was. Uh, pork. Tell us how they made how they how they prepared the pork intestines. Um, well, they were scraped. They were turned inside out and scraped. They were very clean when used. And what, yeah. how do they clean? What, what do they use to clean them? And what do they use to to deodorize them? Well, they just used a real hot water to clean them and water that's and all. lemon and put them in salt water. Then salt too. water. Uh huh. Put them in a strong salt water. And mm -hmm. what about lemon? No, we didn't use lemon. Now, our family used lemon, Did too. They? Uh -huh. I, I don't know why particularly, except And then you would make the, uh, well, it looks like pepperoni now, the mm -hmm. longer, mm -hmm. about so big around. And then those all hung in the grate. They were smoked first with apple wood, I think Dad would use. Okay, that was the best smoking wood to cure the, the sausage. Tell us how you smoked sausage. Had a smokehouse behind the house. And tell us what house. a smokehouse looked like. An outhouse. <laughs> like an outhouse, that's right, except yes. that it was very clean. Yeah. Uh -huh. And you had wood on the bottom, right? Yes. And Did you have it on a, on, a, on a grate or was it just right on the floor? It was just right on the on floor. The floor. The reason for that is that wood burns from the top. It doesn't burn from the uh -huh. bottom. Uh -huh. So yeah. we had that. And what we wanted to do was to make sure that it would not, would not um, have too much air. We wanted the smoke. We didn't have any yeah. fire there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you remember how your father or your mother, probably your mother, uh, would start the fire for the uh, for the for the sausage. No, I don't. But it, what you had to watch it. It didn't get too big a fire oh, because that's right. Couldn't have. Yeah, it. I mean, I think you had to smoke sausage like two days. That's right. The forty-eight hours or right. whatever, and then it was hung up in the granary and the grease stripped out. And golly, you'd wonder why it didn't spoil. And and it didn't. And we cured hams and bacon's in brine, and those were hung up in the granary. Then now tell us what the granary is. Uh, it's the top floor of the bank barn, and on each side was wheat and oats granary, where when you thrashed, the grain went into there. Mm -hmm. And then when you needed cow feed, it was bagged and hauled to the mill down south of Wadsworth. Uh, let's say plank elevators. There's a plank elevator. Plank was on Mill Street. Mill Street. <coughs> and then there was one down across Wads the h and L. Wadsworth. Um, Can't remember what that was uh, called. Wadsworth elevator. Wadsworth. Uh, um, Walls with feed, I, I can't think of it. Something, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, and you loaded up your ears of corn and your wheat and your oats, and it was grown into cow feed. Right. So. And what about the, the food or the, uh, the grain that you would use on a daily basis? How would you get that from upstairs to downstairs? This is on the second floor, and the cows are on the bottom floor. 
Well, it was just used for feed, so we didn't have to, that didn't have to go down at the bottom floor. You had just your bales of hay you had to put down through the chute. Right, some of the farmers had the a chute floor. down there. They would open up a, a um, about this square. That's right, and it would mm -hmm. come running out. In the and, corner. That's right, yeah. in the corner of a You'd of a go up and throw the bales down, then you went downstairs and stacked them neatly, and bales of straw on one side, hay on the other. And then you had these hams in the granary. Mm -hmm. um, summertime? Yes. Hot All year summertime, long. yes, yes. Never spoiled. They were cured and smoked, and no. Never you'd spoiled. You'd go out and take a ham, take it into the kitchen, slice it down, cook it. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. It was, and it was, and it was delicious, right? Yes, yes. No. The um, how many uh, when your parents made this sausage for the German American Club, uh, we're talking about um, several pounds. We're not talking about oh, one or two. Oh, yes, hundred, yeah. Hundreds of pounds. Yes. Hundreds of pounds. Mm -hmm. And your father did that. Yes. There's a special recipe that your parents used, then obviously because everyone makes sausage. Mm -hmm. of the you know the old timers oh, made sausage. Oh, some still do. My brother still does. He still makes mm -hmm. sausage. He still does. But uh, what you um, uh, what what you really get in that sausage is the confidence that the meat is very fresh. It's not too fatty. Well, you have to have some fat. Well, in sausage. Yes, yeah, yes, you have yes, to have so some fat not, in sausage. Mm -hmm. So then, but then you say that I heard you say that it drains down. What drains down? Well, you, the fat that's in the meat, you, after it's smoked, you lose some, but then when it's hung in the granary in that hot summer weather, you could see dripping the grease out of it. Yeah, it, well, you can say it dried. I mean, it, it was better after some of the fat dripped out. That's right, exactly. Tell us, Joanne, if you will, about uh, some of the um, uh, German uh, dishes that uh, were so popular around your family, even during the Depression and afterwards. Um, mother made a lot of stew with potatoes, beef, carrots. Um, she butchered her own chickens on Saturday. We already had roast chicken and dressing on Sunday. And Monday night was dumplings, a potato dumpling that was made. Um, and as far as baking, she was a wonderful baker. The little nut kefli and the strudel that was stretched on the table and filled with fruit. Now, just last week, my two daughters and I made some of that. Um, Pies, delicious pies, cakes, everything. Tell us about the um, the the, um, the the dumplings. There's a special recipe that your mother used for a dumplings. A handful of this, a handful, a handful of that. Of that. That's right. Um, it was made. You peeled your potatoes and you boiled them and you mashed them, and then you added about the same quantity of flour to it, and then you had real hot lard that it bubbled when you poured it on. That's what I wanted to hear you talk about, because we're going to talk about the lard and how you made it. And, and you mix this in, and then after you took your potatoes out of the water, you added more water. That was your soup. And then you made the dumplings in two balls and cooked them in this water. And you could add celery and carrots to flavor. And I still make them. You still make <laughs> I still make them. But them. you don't use the lard. Sure, uh, Crisco now. You use Crisco. Then it was homemade lard. Now, do you remember making lard? And yes. how did you make lard? Well, my parents butchered pork, and uh, you, the fat that's cut off was cut in. It was taken off the skin, and it was cut into squares about this size. And it was put in the big black kettles, which you see now that people use for decorating right. out in the front yard. And it was on like a tripod with a bar across. The kettle was hung on that. Big fire built underneath it. A big fire. And this was done in the wintertime. No, a big fire, yeah. And so now I have a paddle that I bought from the German American Club, which was a big paddle that they stirred the lard Describe with. Describe that paddle, about six feet long. Well, maybe not quite that long. I mean, maybe the four handle, feet. The handle. Yeah, about four feet long four and feet. maybe about three inches wide. Right. Yeah. And then it was used. It was made of, I don't know what kind, it was used to stir the, as it cooked. And then the, the lard came out of these pieces of fat, which well, are cracklings now. Mm -hmm. And then it was put through the sausage press, had a special insert in the sausage press. And it squeezed it down. And in the end, you had cracklings. Cracklings. And which, the lard came mm -hmm. out. And then it set up and got firm. Now, what, what did you do with the cracklings? Mother put them in biscuits. She'd right. make homemade biscuits for Dad while he was out in the barn doing the chores. And he'd come in and have hot crackling biscuits. And how do you, what was it? It's actually pure lard, right? Yeah, well, yeah, but it was squeezed out squeezed to almost out nothing, and almost they were nothing. good. And I mean, they very, tasted very fatty, but no, they were very good. They're very good. Um, how many 
how many pounds of lard do you remember your parents making in a, in a year time? Well, they were big, probably 10 gallon crocks that sat in the pantry and had a lid on it. Mm -hmm. And you had a bucket in the kitchen, so when you needed lard, you went out to the pantry, filled up this little bucket and used it. When it was empty, you went to the pantry and filled it up again. So in other words, in a year's time, uh, your family would, and our family, and all of the families, would use lard instead of cooking yes. oil, instead Making of pies, Christmas. everything. Everything, everything was lard. Frying, it was so chops, good. Whatever. Yeah, whatever. I mean, it was horrible for your health, but it was really, yes, really good. Yes. It really, really made things taste good. If you fried potatoes, you put lard in first, mm -hmm. and then you put the potatoes in. Right. If you, if you did, um, as you say, the the biscuits, um, uh, put cracklings in. Mm -hmm. uh, did you ever eat the cracklings when they were hot? As you were, as mm -hmm. were, and they're mm -hmm. delicious, aren't yes, they? Yes. Absolutely delicious. Uh -huh. But unfortunately... But see, those didn't have skin on. The ones you buy now probably have the skin on, but see, the skin was cut off. We cut the skin off, yes. It was yes. just the fat. Just the fat, mm -hmm. and uh, it's almost inconceivable that we would do that today. Oh, no. No, but... but <laughs> cholesterol. Under, but that, that's right, cholesterol. I'm tons of it. But you know, these people live... My neighbor uh, ate uh, lard every day of his life. He died at age 95. Of course, it's mm -hmm. an isolated case. But um, they didn't seem to, uh, to die of, of that. At no, least we don't no. know that they did. I want to get back to your family now. And we want to, oh, these are, this is so interesting to hear about these little um, Germanic traits and so forth. Um, before we forget, tell us about who your family is. I mean, yes, we know that um, John and uh, Julia Hahn had um, twins, a single and twins again. Uh, tell us who your family is, and then tell us quickly about some of the other Hans uh, okay. in your own family, not the extended family, because there are about a million of them around here. Yeah. Um, I married Bill Chobin from Akron, and we have five children. How would you meet Bill? Well, this Aunt Catherine, who had the Red Pepper Steakhouse, had a private club in Akron, and she wanted to introduce me to Bill. Bill was my Uncle Louis' cousin. So we met and we started dating. We were married a year and a half later. Right, but you are not related to Bill Chauvin except as his wife. Yes. But uh, uncle through marriage. Through marriage. And it was his was cousin. Was his cousin, right. And you married him. Yes. Okay. And is yes. he German too? He's Hungarian. He's Hungarian. Hungarian. Okay. Chauvin's Hungarian. German Hungarian. Mm -hmm. Now, <clears throat> what, um, what did that produce? We have five children. Five children. Who yes. are they and where are they? Uh, Karen is. Married Dave Dehan from Wadsworth, and then Dehan. Dehan. You had got Hans the Dehans. Dehan. Now. D e h a a n, and they are in Bluefield, West Virginia. Since they got married, uh, she works for the Chamber of Commerce, and he is with Tabor Manufacturing in the office. They have two children. Kirk is 16, and Sarah's 14. And then we have Diane. She married Jeff Sponsler from Wadsworth. Uh, Jeff Sponsler. Yes. Uh, Dave and Jeff were in the same class, and they are in the process of moving from the state of Washington to Pennsylvania next week. They bought a home. Uh, Jeff has retired from the Air Force with 22 years service. You've got to be a kidding. I remember, I remember the kids were married. Yes, yes. So he's giving that up. He has a job in Pennsylvania. Uh, they have a son. 18, who went to Akron U one year, and now he's going to Penn State next year. And Jennifer is 15. And then we have Larry. He married Beth Connor from Wadsworth. Mm -hmm. And they live in Aurora. And Larry is with Ellen Bradley in sales. And they have Lindsay, 11, and Kyle is 6. And then we have Debbie Miller. She has two children. Melissa is 11, Jordan is 8, and Debbie is with Wadsworth Schools in transportation. She does the busing for Wadsworth Schools. Wonderful. Yes, Wonderful. she's been there. For handicapped oh. or? Uh, all the busing. All the busing. All 25 buses in Wadsworth, she has charge of. She charges, she's yes. in charge she of that. she does scheduling and yes, complaints, whatever. Lost kids. And I'm sure there are a lot of complaints, unfortunately, because uh, anything that has to do with kids, children. Lost kids, mom's not home, That's you right. know. That's yes. right, exactly, yes. that's it's, right, exactly. It's a very, well, a, a wonderful legacy that you're leaving here at Wadsworth, and you have so many Wadsworth people uh, tied in with you. We still have another son. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I, uh, I, we have a son, David. Uh, he's with King Paving and Concrete. Is and that he's a cement finisher. They're out of Medina. Out of Medina. Yes, mm -hmm. and their company does new developments. They put in the roads all in one stretch, the road and the curb, or all the, one machine. 
way, the way that Wadsworth is going, they're going to have work forever. They, they do. They work <laughs> long hours, yes. Long hours. He has a son, Brent, who is eight. So we have been blessed with nine grandchildren. Nine, grandchildren. nine grandchildren. Now yes. you and you and Bill live alone right now. Yes, and, and babysit us, a lot. <laughs> and babysit a lot. And tell us yeah. where you live, Joanne. Uh, we live on Wolf Avenue. On Wolf Avenue, yes. and you've lived there for many, many years. Uh, since we're married, forty-three years. Forty-three years, yes. you've lived on Wolf Avenue. Let's go back to um, the, the the these quaint little German things again. Uh, you had mentioned that your dad and mom and the Justs and other people would go to the German American Club in Akron and have dances and they would dance and so forth. Now, uh, what was the attraction to the German American Club? The, other than the fact that they were all German and they had German music, German dance bands and things like that, what were the attractions there? Well, I think just meeting your friends and having a good time and then they had a hall upstairs that they did weddings and like I say, dad helped make sausage and mother helped make donuts for bake sales, and they were just both very active. Uh, they always had a summer picnic at a park, and people danced and ate and sauerkraut and sausage. And, and you remember those things? Oh, yes. yes. Oh, yes. Now, and with a certain degree of, um, of flavor, obviously. Uh, you had talked about sauerkraut and, and um, uh, sausage. If you were to identify, in your own mind, the most well, I was going to say the most flavorful. That, is, that means that you want only about food. The, the most um, uh, outstanding event that occurred with one of these, uh, what would it be? You mean as far as the club was concerned? Yes, the club is concerned. Well, I had my wedding there. Your wedding there. <laughs> All right, that's what we wanted to hear, uh -huh. the, the wedding. Yeah. And uh, do you remember uh, the wedding? Well, I'm sure you remember the wedding well enough, but um, uh, was it just a bunch of friends who, who got together? or uh, About 250 people. 250 people. Yes, we had a big German wedding. We were married. That's, I wanted to hear about that. Tell we us about that. We were married 45 years last week. 45 yes. years last week. Tell uh, us about that German wedding uh, reception. Well, my parents did most of the work. All of the um, work. <clears throat> in fact, the chickens were clean, our own chickens, and they were taken to City Bakery and roasted. So we had roast chicken and dressing and mashed potatoes and vegetables and a lot of sheet cakes. And then after the bride dance, we served sausage sandwiches. Yeah, and we had a band and a big wedding. No. Lots to eat and drink. We, we got, and the beer? Yes. A little yes. bit of beer. Oh, yes, Germans, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Tell us about the wedding dance. Uh, well, you dance with the bride, mm -hmm. and while the groom did dance, yes, he did. The groom danced then. The uh, men danced with me, and the uh, women danced with Bill. And then you have um, probably my maid of honor is sitting there with the bowl, and they put money in before they dance with the bride and groom. Mm -hmm. And they say, let's send them as far as we can on their honeymoon. Mm -hmm. So that was traditional, yes. Now, do you remember how much they, how far they sent you? Well, we went to Florida on our honeymoon. So you must have got more than a dollar and a half. Yes, right. <laughs> Many people just empty their whole billfuls into those bridal dances. Uh -huh. Then this other, this other custom, which I think is so quaint as well, after the bridal dance, Sa sausage sandwiches. Yes. Now uh -huh. tell us about that. That, that sounds was, so that good. That was homemade, yes, yes. And why, you already had a dinner. Yes, we had a dinner probably about 7 o'clock, yeah. And uh, the sausage, sa sand sausage sandwiches then, about 10, 11 o'clock? Yes, yes, mm -hmm. uh-huh. Everybody ate again. We had ate good again. cakes and nut and poppy seed, fleck, we call it, we call it strudel now, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And who made those strudel? Uh, City Bakery. They oh, they made did? my wedding cake, uh huh. City Bakery was, and that's where the chickens were roasted. And why, why, why was City Bakery chosen? Did, were they friends? Well, they were near Grant Street there, and uh, we had a baker from City Baker that delivered to our house. His name was Paul Wise. I remember Paul and Wise. And he was the baker who came to our house, I think, three times a week, and we ran out and bought our bread and our bakery. Make Paul Wise was from Randolph. Yes, he was. Yes, yes he was. Mm -hmm. Very nice person. Yes, I remember Paul Wise. That, yes. That's something. Now, that brings up another point here. Uh, on the farm, you didn't get to, you really didn't get to town all that often. 
we had people coming with bread trucks. You almost never see a bread truck anymore. No. Could you describe what was in a bread truck? And this is Paul Wise drove the City Baker Company, yeah. tall, thin man. He had a like a van type thing. He'd pull up behind the summer house there and open the doors, and the bread was on the top shelf. And then he pulled out real long drawers with the bakery in. There were wooden drawers. Yes. Mm -hmm. And besides the bakery, um, Elno Stoffer came around with the grocery truck. Okay, now Elno Stoffer was from where? Sharon, Sharon Center. Center. Tell us a little bit he, why he came with the grocery truck. Well, I think that was probably his first business. Mm -hmm. um, he'd come, it was a big truck, wooden, and he'd open the doors and you could buy canned goods or just whatever you wanted from it. This was, in other words, it was a store on wheels, is right, what it was. Right, right, right. But it wasn't one that you could walk into. No, no. Because it was, they didn't have, well, they might have had something like that, but they really didn't have a lot of them in the 30s. But um, why would it be that a grocery truck would come to a farm? What things could you not grow on your farm? You had meat, you well, had vegetables yeah. and so forth. What, 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 what was it that you needed? Well, I don't know. There were some canned things, or I don't know, maybe like noodles, or I don't know from it. I, I really don't remember what he had on it, but, but you know, they, we also had a fish man that came on Fridays. Fresh fish, fresh, fresh fish. fish. <laughs> and he had a horn, as a matter of fact, he used yes. to blow. Oh, and then the German baker who was on Broad Street behind Brenneman's there, a German bakery that was kind of down in the basement by the dry cleaners there. Uh, George. He had a, a bread route bread also, route. the he pumpernickel was, bread. Uh, was he German? Yes. I think he was German. I, I don't thought, know his name. I, 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 George. I thought George was either Greek or um, or Hungarian. Well, or, I'm sorry, uh, or uh, Slovak. I'm not sure. Could have been. But the bakery, you kind of went yes, down a few mm -hmm. steps, and it was right there. And he had nothing but bread, though. He didn't oh, have any bread. Oh, you smell bread when you walk no. by. <laughs> he never had anything but bread. There's just no, bread. There were no baked goods there. No, George. Just bread. George the baker, we call him. And it. he had a, a route. He came right. out that way. Do you remember? Uh, things like the newspapers. Did you get a newspaper when you're out there on the farm? Oh yes, you did. Mm -hmm. Do you remember what on the newspaper that you liked to read, particularly uh, like the funnies? Oh, ran out and got the paper and read the funnies and read it on the way to the house. On the way to the house. Do Just you to remember see what which funnies on. they had during the 30s? Uh, Nancy. Nancy. Smiling Jack. Smiling Jack. It was like a continuation. Always. Mm -hmm. And Orphan Annie. Orphan Annie. Um, Dick little Abner. Crazy. Little Abner. Yes. Dick Tracy. Yes, right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, what about some of the little cartoons like? Um, Blondie. Blondie. Yes, okay. Blondie. Bring, bringing up fathers, uh, which was uh, Major Hoople. Was it, there wasn't a Peanuts then, I don't think. No, there was, was no there? Peanuts. Alley Oop. Yeah. Alley Oop. And what <laughs> Gasoline about? Gasoline Alley or? Gas? No, they didn't start until later. They was didn't it? start. Yeah, they started okay. in '45. But in the '30s, uh, there was another Joe Paluca. Yes. Remember Joe Paluca? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And. Um, some other ones. Yeah. You can't think of all of them right now. I can't either. No. Too long ago. <laughs> now, when you read the paper, um, was this something that um, you just kind of sat down and did? I heard you say that you ran in the house with the paper and read the funnies and so forth. Um, in the evenings, there's no television. There's almost nothing that is entertaining that, that is entertaining. Uh, what did farmers do in the evening? Well, we just sat under the shade tree, I think. Her mother would go out and hoe in her kitchen garden. She'd be out in the field all day, and she had a little kitchen garden that had her parsley and carrots and where we started our own cabbage plants. And she would go out or work in her flower beds. Mother loved flowers. She had a lot of flowers. She'd go out and work in that. Um, we had a lot of shade trees. I think we just kind of sat in the shade trees and Gee, a trip into town for an ice cream cone was a treat. A real treat. At ice lace, the skyscraper cones. The skyscraper for how, for how much? Oh, five, ten cents, five maybe ten a cents. nickel. And if you went outside and lost it, you went back in and they just gave you another one. That's right, there's no problem <laughs> at all. I, I guess what I'm trying to, to ask here, and I, I know the answer to it, and we know the answer to it, but so that people understand what we did, we really didn't have what was called recreational uh, time no. at, after supper. If you did anything, you might listen to the radio, but uh -huh. very, very little. You might read the newspaper, and that was probably the biggest thing that you had to read. Very few people had books that they read or, um, you know, magazines. Magazines were not all, they, there were some magazines, mm -hmm. and they weren't all that popular. And the farmers many times would not get all of those because they, they were very well, busy. Farm very, magazines. Right, farm magazines, right. Going to bed at uh, midnight? No. When? No. Probably shortly after dark. Shortly after dark, because you got up. Well, being truck farmers, um, 
on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays until the truck was loaded. I mean, all these vegetables had to be washed and packed and loaded on the truck. And after it was loaded on the truck, Daddy made us sweep the garage out and hose it down sometimes. All baskets were put together. I mean, no baskets sitting around. They were put in the bunches of four. Mm -hmm. So until the truck was loaded, and then sometimes shell lima beans. I mean, we had lima beans, so we would sit and shell lima beans to take to the market. So by the time it came dark, you were tired. Dead you maybe tired. had a snack and went to bed. And then the very following morning, what happened? Well, you got up and you're out in the field picking tomatoes and peppers and for Dad to take to the market the next day. Right. But to go to market, what time would you have to get up? To go to market? Um, Dad probably left about 3 o'clock. 3 o'clock in the on morning? On Saturdays. A little bit earlier on Saturdays, yeah, about 3 o'clock on Saturdays. I think the lights went on at 4. It was Summit Growers Market. Yeah. Where was it? Do you remember where it was? Close to Akron U, there on Carroll and Beaver. Carroll Street, that's yes, right. Yes, mm -hmm. uh-huh. It had a roof on and a cement aisle and stalls you backed into. You unload your produce and and the store guys would come with their flashlights before the lights went on buying their produce and so you helped them carry it to their truck and yeah. Hard work. Hard work, yeah. Not too much recreation. No, no. No. Sitting under the apple tree and the in the um, in the evening was probably it. Between the house and the summer house there, we had shade tree, yes. You just yes. sat there, and yeah. that was about it. And yeah. you were well satisfied. You were too tired to be playing. Too, too tired to be <laughs> well, playing. Well, you ride your bike once in a while, you know, or mm -hmm. my brother and I play ball, my brothers. But other than that, no, that was about it. Now, we haven't talked about the inside of the house. We've done some cooking here and so forth. You had to learn the, cer the same kinds of things as a woman, uh, as a female, you had to learn the, all of the inside things and all the outside things as well. Mm -hmm. Do you remember your inside, uh, quote, recreation, like cleaning houses and, and uh, cooking and preparing food, all of that other kind of thing? Well, I didn't do much cooking, didn't do laundry. Mother usually, Monday was washing and Tuesday was ironing. And I really didn't do too much cooking. I helped, but Mother did most of the cooking, so. But you learned how to cook then afterwards. I sure did. Right. Well, then well, when I worked at the injector, I came home, and Mother was out in the field, and I had to prepare the meals then. Mm -hmm. I got home at 5.30, and I cooked supper then after I went to work. You, you just uh, took out of my mouth the words that I was going to ask. What happened after high school? Well, I, they, jobs were easy to find then, so the Ohio injector came to the high school and gave tests to the girls in, I don't know what class it was, and I had an interview, and I had a job at the injector. Doing what for whom? Well, I would have been in payroll then, but my father said he needed me on the farm for the summer. So they were very nice about it. Dad said they could have me in the fall. So in October, I started, and I worked in the billing department. And then I worked there two and a half, no, four and a half years before I was married, and two after I was married till I had my first child, and then I was a stay-at-home mom. No. Now, for whom did you work and with whom did you work? I worked for Mr. Reed. He was head of billing department. And Dorothy Ryder from Wadsworth was mm -hmm. my boss. Mm -hmm. And let's see, Verna Johnston worked there. Vida Daniels worked there. Uh, Joanne Hinkle Sessman, a classmate, worked there. And Joanne Allen, I know her married name now, well, worked she, there. Um, her first husband's gone, but. Uh, yeah. Joanne. She worked there. Mm -hmm. uh, Ruth Rohr worked there a while from my class. Yeah, it was a very nice office. It was in the, in the new part, the new building? Yes. In the new office Upstairs. buildings down there? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Then, then you had children. Yes. And <clears throat> what are your activities in Wadsworth now? Do you still go to the German or American Club? Do you? No, I Why don't. Why not? My husband doesn't dance. <laughs> oh, I see. Well, no. also, the German American Club is not there anymore. No, so, no, so it's, it's just gone. been sold. My brother helped with selling of that. He was an active member, and someone, the older people, didn't want the job, so he helped sell that. And I think it's probably been finalized. There's some money there that has to be distributed. It's what a pity, because it's such a wonderful place. Yes, yes. What a wonderful but place. it needed a lot of upkeep. And those, uh, those ethnic places were just uh, just an absolute beehive of activity. Your friends and family, that's yes. That's right, that's yes. right, exactly. The, um, <clears throat> the many years that you served in the capacity as a truck farmer, and we have great pride in saying that. That's nothing that we would uh, shy away from. The number of years that you served as a loyal daughter 
of a German family and so forth. What customs have you maintained from the old German tradition? The cooking, the starchy, cooking. greasy foods. Oh, uh, my mother made wonderful graham cracker pie. I do that yet. And like I say, the strudel and a lot of pastries she made. I have her recipes, or there are recipes. And brother, you yeah. have all of those recipes, yes. a handful of this and my a handful of that. Uh -huh. My mother's little recipe box, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. And what about, uh, what about the sausage and things of this nature? Still do that. Still yeah. do well, that. I go buy mine, but it's easier. Yes, mm -hmm. but you, <laughs> yeah. still know, you would know how to make it if you had to. Oh, yes, my brother mm -hmm. makes it. Uh -huh. He gets together with his son-in-law and cousins, and they make so many pounds for each one, 25 pounds for each one, and yes, they still make it. And they still, they still smoke it? Uh, no, they don't smoke it. They use it fresh, yeah. They use it fresh? Yes. But and Ed just, John on trees, he still makes it and he smokes it. He's like his parents did. The same way? Yes, yes. I imagine you could probably sell that by the ton. Oh, if you yes, could, If you yes. could possibly get it, uh, the Food and Drug Administration to, um, to approve it. Yeah, and, um, and Ed makes his own wine also. I mean, he showed me in the basement. He buys grapes. He has his own grapes, and he has a system. He makes his own wine. He makes his own press. Yes, blueberry, uh, grape. Mm -hmm. Elderberry, yes, makes wine. Of course, wine. the Italian tradition, if, if wine isn't made out of grape, it's not wine. Oh, is it? Oh, okay. <laughs> That's the Italian tradition. Yeah. Uh, we're going to run out of time here if we don't hurry, so I'm going to ask you some very quick questions in, in quick order. What would be the one thing that you think that was the most important lesson that you learned in this strong, strong German family? What was it? Uh, Living on the farm, the family life, the bonding, the, family, the, the bonding, closeness. The closeness. I had wonderful parents that were right there when needed. My father never yelled. I mean, if he said, you're not going to go, you didn't say, why can't I? You I mean, we had discipline. Uh, my father never discipline. spanked. Your punishment was to stand in the corner. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I, it was the, working with my parents. That was the one thing. And my brothers. Of course, they were like 10 and 13 years younger. So till they were teenagers, I was often married. Often married. Yeah. yeah. So you're kind of the mother of the, yeah, of the family. Yeah. The yeah. second question I wanted to ask is, given the kind of um, background that you have, uh, what have you done to instill many of these values in your own children? Uh, Are they Germanic? Uh, well, I mean, in their, I, in their attitudes? Uh, no. No, I mean, they're, Daddy taught us a lot, especially if you want something, you save the money and then you purchase it. That's right. That's what uh, we all did. If you want a ago. TV, you save the money and then you buy it. Don't you, buy it on You credit. pay cash, right. There weren't plastic cards then. Right. And you still do so, that, don't you? Yes, and yes, absolutely. I still absolutely. have that feeling in my own And it's heart. hard to instill this on your children. Very difficult. I mean, I say, this is how I was brought up. You know, so and this is still the way we do. Sometimes it. you go round and round. You know mm -hmm, that certainly. I know this is a different generation, but the next question that I have is one that's going to be diff more difficult to answer. What are the values that you want to remember, and you want your children to remember, and your grandchildren to remember? I mean, just one little thing, and I'll give you an example. Uh, I want my children to remember, and I want my grandchildren to remember something that my parents always said before they did absolutely anything, and that was, if it be God's will. Oh. See, we never said, they never said anything, I'm going to go there tomorrow. They would never say that without saying, if it be God's will. Is it? Always. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. That's the one thing that I want. Is there something like that that you want to instill in your family, your grandchildren, that is so very vital to your own, mm. uh, your own fabric? Well, I can't really think of anything. Is there a saying that your mother had or your father had? No, I don't think so. Probably not. Mm -hmm. No. What about uh, some of the, um, um, oh, the clever sayings that they had? You know, for instance, my kids will probably remember me as saying that um, I always say, well, life is not a rehearsal. You oh, know, oh that, uh -huh. that kind of a thing. Uh -huh. Did your mother and father have those kinds of sayings that? Um, no, I don't think they did. Probably don't. Well, uh, they were just easygoing people. Yeah. Strong, easygoing. Strong will. Very, yeah. very strong willed. Yes, extremely yes. strong willed. Yeah. And your brothers are very strong willed. Yeah. Now, mm -hmm. very quickly, tell us about brother, um, brother single. <laughs> brother Ron. Brother Ronnie. Mm -hmm. uh, well, he worked at the post office. I remember when he was uh, born. Mm -hmm. He was working on the farm, and Don Boyer was our mailman. Mm -hmm. 
and he said uh, he needed a substitute. He said, Ron, would, Ron was like 18, and he said, would you be interested in being my sub? So that's how he got started in the post office. And he worked there for 33 years he was then? 33 he years. He substituted for 33 <laughs> years <laughs> on a full-time substitute basis. Yeah. And uh, when he retired, he went out in style, he rented a limousine and did his route his last day in a limo. And, and his that, Uncle Sam suit. His Uncle Sam suit. He's yeah. noted around town. His wife made that for him. Really? Yes. And his Uncle Sam suit. Yes. Ron is a great, great person. Yes. I really, really admire him. And now, what about the twins? The ones who, who had to take uh, second place to the first twins who were born in the family? Well, Larry and like right here in Wadsworth, yeah. yeah. I see them all the time. Yes. And yeah. what are they like? Um, well, see, they're 13 years younger, so mm -hmm. yeah. And Larry is married to Nina, a very nice person. Ron's wife is German. Gladys is German. Mm -hmm. And I love Gladys. I love Nina dearly. Yeah. Now these are, uh, what about their personalities? Were they as strong as yours and Johnny's and as strong as Ronnie's? Or did they, did they lose something in the translation as they got the, uh, farther away? Well, I don't know. Mm -hmm. They did or not. Well, well, these are second marriages, though, so, yeah, they're not, I mean, you know. They're strong the people. The number of years, though. So. They're strong people. Joanne, yeah. you have brought to us a beautiful, beautiful account of the Germanic family, or the German families in Wadsworth, particularly the Hahn families, notable Hans, Kramers, Justs, all who came from Germany, and who brought with them some of the most beautiful of customs, which you are going to, to perpetuate which we would love to be able to perpetuate, and some of that sausage we'd love to eat. We are grateful to you for all of that, but particularly we're grateful because you have stayed in Wadsworth for 68 years and have given a dignity to Wadsworth that only Joanne Han Chauvin could give. Thank you for being on our program. Thank you, and I love Wadsworth. It's a beautiful community. It is. You can't move me out. No. <laughs>